Yes, that we are. All right, so switch us over to this screen. So uh, welcome back, guys, to the 38th session of Arcadia. Uh, I just have two very quick announcements. Uh, one pertains to the game, and the other is just sort of in general. Uh, the first announcement is, as I said yesterday on Amalthea, uh, I have recently, re ah, recently released a Andromeda Mission Compendium. You can find it on my Patreon and on Continuing Mission. Uh, it is a book of uh, four full-length adventures for Star Trek Adventures, and uh, I would love it if you ran it to send me feedback. Let me know what works, what doesn't, and uh, I always love hearing stories. Uh, the second thing, uh, as it pertains to this game, is as I've told my players, there is a very real possibility of a TPK here. Um, but on that note, I want it known that uh, I'm trying to be as fair as possible while still providing a challenge. However, sometimes character death happens. So just be aware, I'm definitely not trying to act with malice. I'm simply trying to be as fair as possible to you guys and to what the Gem Hadar would be doing. Um, but if at any point you guys feel slighted, uh, even as viewers, please let me know and I will do my best to fix that. Uh, but since we have a jam-packed session today, I'm just going to do a quick recap. So, at the start of the last session, you all had basically been on patrol, uh, nothing was going on, and then three distress signals slammed you at once. The first was that the USS Minnesota had come under attack uh, near the Setlik system, and it was transporting a spy with vital information about the uh, oncoming attack about Betazoid. And the next distress call that came in was from Minos Corva. Apparently they were having some form of plague or outbreak that needed attending to. And then, if things weren't bad enough, uh, there was a mass riot on Nebaron 2, and that required Starfleet's intervention as well. So, you all split up the fleet, you sent the Thunderchild to go deal with the riots. You sent the saucer section of the Arcadia to go deal with the medical concern. And then you took the Torchbearer and the secondary hull of the Arcadia to go help rescue this spy. Well, in the process of rescuing the spy, the Torchbearer took some very heavy hits. The Minnesota was lost. And right when things were starting to look super dire, the Arcadia showed up, threw up her shields around the uh, th Torchbearer, and then the Arcadia started taking hits of its own. And that's where we're going to drop right in. Uh, is It's going to be the Torchbearer's turn. You would see on your tactical systems that shields have been extended over you, but that it's not permanent. And you guys can go. You should have your full actions. All right. Uh, do, do, do. I'm going to, uh, I can give, like, verbal, like, like, free talk is fine, right? Yeah. Alright, um, I'm gonna calm down to the, uh, sick bay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Captain Cavell. Yes, uh, Captain. Your first priority is a Cardassian. I've seen uh, him shortly. Understood. And I'm going to look to... Uh, so, where is Klein? Is he still on the bridge, knocked out? Uh, no, we'll say at this point Klein has been taken to sickbay as well. All right. Uh, Mr. Weber. Yes, sir. We have uh, Type 8 sensor probes on our shuttle, on our ship, right? Yes blind. Let's launch them. The computers and communication relays are still up. We can piggyback our signal onto them and then get a, an idea of what's out there. Yes, sir. That'll be my direct task. Okay. So that will be your command action. But launching a probe, I believe, is a difficulty zero. So free, uh, free momentum, really. Uh, well, let me look. Uh, da, 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 da. This task Nailed does it. not require a roll. Okay, so it has no difficulty. Uh, so it reduces the difficulty tasks of sensor use by one. Okay. Uh, I will say because your sensors are destroyed, or are they disabled? They're disabled. Uh, I will say that because they are disabled, 
Uh, your your difficulty is increased by two to attack, and you still cannot get any assist from the uh, ship sensors on any task. However, you still can fire weaponry. It's just at a plus one difficulty instead of a plus two. Okay. But that would be your direct action. Yeah, at this point, at least we can see and still kind of fight. All right. So that's the Torchbearer. Uh, up next is going to be Jem'Hadar Attack Ship A, the one sort of at the left-hand side of the screen. And I'm going to double-check distances here, but I believe they are within torpedo range of the Arcadia. Oh. Yes, they are within torpedo range of the Arcadia. So I'm going to spend one threat here for an additional die, and let's see what happens. Arcadia. Okay, so this is important. Uh, so Arcadia, uh, your resistance is eight, correct? Or no, it's seven because you have a blade of armor. Yes. So, uh, you reduce that torpedo damage to a grand total of one. However, you have no shields. So that is actually going to cause two breaches between the fact you have no shields and, uh, because they have high yield on their torpedoes. So let's see where you get hit. Uh, another hit to structure, which is important. Okay, this is Jesus. super important uh, now. So you're at five breaches to structure, which means that you are in the same sort of state that the Torchbearer is. Uh, your vessel has suffered many fires and serious hull breaches, and sections are losing life support. This means that difficulty to repair has gone up by three or no the complication range of all tasks to perform repairs goes up by three so 17 to 20 and the difficulty also goes up by one your resistance is the big thing here though your ship's resistance is now half rounding down so you now have three resistance Hooray! Yeah, hooray! Except not really. <sighs> Alright, so uh, just know that if you take any more damage to structure, uh, you will be just... You're like... You, you still can fight. You're not, like, completely destroyed, but it's a bad thing if you get another hit to structure. Um, but it is now your turn, Arcadia A. Is Are these uh, something that can be... Breaches can't be healed during combat, right? Uh, the only way to heal a breach during combat is if you take a very specific engineering talent that is in the operations book. You yeah. can get rid of the um, the effects of a breach, but you can't actually get rid of the breach itself without that talent. Lieutenant Commander Zakul, give me good news. A lot of things are breaking. We're in a lot of trouble, and... I want to hear good news. Silence is golden. <laughs> <laughs> I got reports of casualties on all decks. We got breaches everywhere. Well, we're still alive. That's your good news. All right, Lieutenant Commander Dantes, make up some good news. We could fire, right? Yeah, you you guys still have operational sensors and weapons, so you certainly could fire. Blow them out of the sky and fix it later. <laughs> Alright, you heard him tactical. Let's do it. I don't want to see anything to recover. No salvage operations for these gyms are. Alright. So, uh, who do we have at Tactical at the moment? Did we decide on Janus, or are we still using uh, Sin slash Hylong? Um, I feel like for purposes of just rolls, we should probably use Sin. You guys are controlling securities at 16. Uh, and she has Starship Tactical Systems as a focus, so that'll help. But what do you got, Janus? Do you have anything that would uh, help us out in that regard? Control and security is 15 and I do have shipboard tactical systems, so they are that'd be a higher one. Yeah, one let's higher. have Janice do the rolls then. Alright. 
So, yeah. All right, and let's uh, let's do spread so we can get as many breaches as possible on their ship. Okay, so just so you know, right now you are at, I believe, one unit away. Oh, no, you're at two. All right, carry on, which means you are at the proper range for um, for your phaser arrays. So your difficulty here, Janice, is a uh, difficulty two, control security, and the ship is assisting you with weapon security. Okay, do we want to make sure we hit this guy? Yes. Yeah. So we're taking one momentum? Okay. By all means, yeah. At least. I think we only have two right now, so we can only do one more die. Unless you give me threat. And we don't want to give him that right now. Yeah, there's still another ship out there, possibly. Our difficulty for this is still only two, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So here's my three dice. Yeah, we're... Hey. Submitting my three with a focus. All right. Okay, that's two successes. Let's see if the ship gets you momentum. Dantes, do you want to roll for the ship? Uh, yeah, sure. What do I roll? Weapon <laughs> security. Oh, one dice or two dice? Or uh, are there any one. focuses? Uh, one in the ship always has a focus. All right, you get that momentum right back. So yeah, go ahead and uh, roll me your phaser array damage there, Janice, and let me know yep. what the uh, let me know what to do. Hey, uh, I don't have the, tor the sheet up for the ship. How many are we, are we rolling? Uh, should be your scale plus your security of the ship. So you are a scale five. So you should be so doing nine. nine challenge dice. Yep. And we've got two momentum right now. You do, for, or in an, an additional two for this. Ooh. So yes, because Should you are using phasers, you do have two floating bonus momentum. What would you like to spend that bonus momentum on? I'd say we probably want to do at least one of those for piercing. Well, we've got two zeros to reroll. That's also true. <clears throat> do we want to go with a reroll on two die? I'd say we use, like, what? I know you said you wanted to do spread to Han, but what about we could spend one of those from the versatile on reloading the zeros, and then we do spread for one of them, and then we can spend our, one of our actual momentum maybe for piercing? Well, spread comes because you guys uh, rolled an effect, and that's the... Oh, uh, gotcha. Array. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, we get that for free. Um, actually... All, all of it into piercing seems good. Yeah, I agree with that. Wait, is the max is the max number of breaches two or three? For what? It's it's not it's not one breach for every five that. Oh yes, it's one if you're over five, one if your shields are down, and one if you have high yield. So the maximum you can do a turn is three. But spread is a second hit, so it. Oh, Who's yes, then BB? I would say if the spread is enough to cause another breach, then it could play into here, yes. I think piercing is going to be important. Yeah. All right, well, tell me what, uh, Janice, you're the one who made the attack, so what are you using those momentum for? Oh, uh, sounds like we're going to go for pierce on all of them. Okay, so that's Penetration 2, which means that 4 resistance is off the top, which means the Gemhadar ship has 0 resistance. So let's break it down. You've done f uh, 11 damage to their shields, which gets rid of their shields, so that's one breach. You do that over 5, that's another breach. And then because you rolled an effect and you, mo and you stated that you were doing spread, that is damage to the ship without shields. So, Janus... Probably your training and tactical systems comes into play here because not only do you blow this Jem'Hadar attack ship out of the sky, uh, it is completely obliterated. It is no more. Sweet! I just do it like, yeah! <laughs> and then go, oh shit, there's another one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it is at this point uh, I'm actually going to be spending six threat here to bring in two more Jem'Hadar attack ships. Oh, you <laughs> mother. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I think we still have engine sir too. I, I, just I'm just gonna let you know right now. I, I just love you just a little bit more right at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I, I made sure I looked it up properly, uh, just so anyone at, at home is wondering why I'm doing this. Uh, a, because it's dramatic and I love it. Uh, B, it is the scale of the ship uh, amount of threat to bring in new ships, and they are scale 3. And C, it is evil, and I'm clearly <laughs> evil. Um, so yeah, the, the good news is that these attack ships aren't going to go quite yet. But Jem'Hadar attack ship A is going to get one uh, additional fire on you guys uh, before it is going to be your turn again. So, uh, let's see. Uh, yes, they have security four, which means they can fire again. Arcadia, how, you, how do you feel about uh, another torpedo? I, th I think we're trying to quit. I mean, it's, it's really unfair that you're trying to force this on us. You know, we've been okay. Well, in that case, let's shoot the torchbearer. Okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> well, the good news is that the Ajemhadar miss completely. Uh, they are unable to get any crew rolls, which means that they miss completely. Uh, so it is going to roll back over to the torchbearer. Okay, so what can we do? We have no power. We can't fire anything, can we? You cannot do anything that requires power. Torpedoes don't require power. Yeah, torpedoes do not require power. But remember, mm -hmm. firing torpedoes is both a threat I have to spend to fire them myself, but you also give me threat if you are firing them. Can we move? Can we open distance? Uh, I would say you cannot because I believe every single helm action requires a point of power. But let me double check. <sighs> uh, no, you could conceivably move anywhere within medium range, but any more than medium requires power. Okay. Right, try to open distance. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably our best option here. We gotta put a buffer between us and them. Unfortunately, that's the big giant thing with no saucer, but, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we'll move, uh, how far, how many squares can we move in medium? Uh, you can move up to six. But what I am going to do is I'm still going to have you roll because it is a difficulty zero task by default. Uh, well, let's, uh, Janice, let's just have you multitask here since we don't have a sure. helm officer yet. Um, if you want well, to. Well, we have Jaro on the torchbearer, don't we? That we said we were having him act as con, I thought. Oh, sorry. I was thinking the Arcadia. So, yeah, uh, Los, uh, if you want to. Do the maneuver task for me, or Jaro, or whoever it is. You know who you yeah. are. <laughs> I do. Um, um, is it control or daring? It is control plus con uh, at a difficulty of one because of your breaches, and it is assisted by the ship's engines in con. All right, I am not going to spend uh, momentum here, um, and I do have a focus. <laughs> All right, that's two successes, so that's one momentum. And then let's see if the ship assists you for even more momentum. You said engine con for Correct. the torchbearer? Okay. Okay, so hey, you get a momentum. But yeah, you can move anywhere within six. Uh, I just mapped it out. We're going to be in range no matter what on this map. Yeah, but now it means we have long range options. All right. Fair. I'm just gonna do. Um. Oh wait, let me. I want to see something. Do I have? I do not have helpful. Uh, talents. So Oops. what would be the difficulty of launching quantum torpedoes? So it's still a standard torpedo. So firing torpedoes is difficulty three, as long as you are within long range. Okay. And each well each uh, each time you fire torpedoes is one threat. You can do a salvo for a total of three threat. And the benefit of salvo is it does a additional challenge die worth of damage. The 
But does it also give, like, spread? I think it does, yeah. Well, who has the determination left aboard the uh, torchbearer? Not me. I believe the engineer does. Pull up my... I thought GM said we all have it for this mission? Yeah, I'm being nice, and I gave everyone their determination back. Well, I'm unconscious, that's why I'm saying no. (laughs) Okay, so... I want to use my determination to fire. Okay. Salvo, whatever the highest thing I can do with quantum torpedoes. All right, so uh, if you salvo, <coughs> that gives me three threat. But which is you, enough to just yeah, bring in is, another ship. Is another enough for another ship, just so you know. Uh, so you are still rolling a difficulty three control security, assisted by the ship's weapon security. And the difficulty here is a three. So Good let's question. let's roll that and resolve that before we worry about damage. Since we have our determination back, does that mean I have my metal back too? No, I'm not going to let you have your metal twice. Okay. And uh, d- not the uh, intelligence officer advantage either? Uh, I'm going to say you can have that back, yes, because I didn't make a note of who used it. <laughs> uh, then I want to use the advantage to lower the difficulty by one. Okay, what would be the advantage, just out of curiosity? Um, I know the design structure of the Dominion ships, the weak points that we've been told about uh, through our encounters with them and the reports I've gotten. All right, yeah, that's fair. I'll allow it. So your difficulty now becomes a two. Yep. And it is control security? It is indeed. Go ahead and roll for the torchbearer for us. All right, Torchbearer gets you an assist. Oh, man. Should I take a momentum for an extra dice, guys? Um, I oh, think so. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I agree. I think the first die is always a kind of like an automatic. Okay. Oh, man. Huh. <sighs> and I don't have a focus um, espionage because I did right. Nah. I'm using my... Nope, nah. all right. <laughs> Hey, look at you. You get two momentum back. So I believe you're at a four total. Yeah. All right, so uh, quantums are four, which means you're rolling me nine challenge die, and you have vicious one and spread on this. Yep. Oh, and this is at the... I never said which ship. Yeah, let me know which one I'm inflicting this to. Uh, Let's go with E. Okay. It showed up. Uh... Oh, Alright, so that is 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, so that would be 12 damage before resistance. Do you want to uh, spend anything on penetration? I uh, I think it just blows up if we give it penetration 4 again. Yeah. Alright. Alright, so that'll bring you down to 2. And yeah, Crowley, you fire a salvo of quantum torpedoes. And it blows the newly arrived Jem'Hadar attack ship E completely out of the sky. It it just evaporates. Okay. A little bit better. <laughs> just a bit. Just a bit. So, uh, up next is going to be attack ship F. And attack ship F is actually going to uh, do back-to-back actions because I'm going to spend some threat to do that. Uh, so first off, it's going to move all the way up to here. Within okay. close range. Oh, no. And it's going to open fire. The good news is apparently it missed completely. So, good news for you. Uh, up next is the Arcadia A. <laughs> Alright, we can't afford to take any more hits, so we need to start taking evasive maneuvers and then... Uh, with our sensors, I'm trying to remember what all of our options are. Just looking at what we've got left. Yeah, we can get shields back too, maybe. Yeah, that'll be good. Or uh, do you have that talent that fixes breaches? No. But I'm awesome and everything else. Boy, I bet you'd like to have that gun dock on right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, depending on how this goes, gun dock could be gun dust. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Jerry rig whatever. <laughs> I think I like doing because ship A hasn't gone or has has ship A shot both times. Ship A has done all the attacks and all the things it can do in this round. Or... Okay. So the only thing that can act again is ship F. Could we blow up ship F? No, we've we've shot twice this round, right? Yes. I mean, you could attempt to shoot again, but it's going to be at an increased difficulty. So that gets to what? Difficulty three? For phasers, yes. I like it. Uh, I guess Sin this time, since she hasn't shot. Sure. All right, so yeah, control security, and then uh, weapon security. I'll go ahead and roll for sin. Any uh, mm. momentum being used? Let's use one. I think. Okay, so you get three dice for sin. Mm-hmm. Um, I might. Would this point of determination work for her if I wanted to? Other safety is more important than my own. I would say that could apply, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll do Cause, that. Because we're protecting the torchbearer from attack ship F. Yeah. So that's five successes from Sin, counting okay. the determination. Weapon security with the computer? Uh, weapon yeah, security with the, arc the ship. With, yep. All right, so uh, you get two momentum back, and yeah, go ahead and roll your damage. Okay, um, we have versatile two with the phaser array, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, do we want to do spread with that like before? That happens automatically. Oh, gotcha. So nine, wait, eight or nine challenge dice? I can't remember. Should nine, be, I think. Uh, nine. Scale plus security, so nine. Yes. Okay. Okay, so you would be doing uh, seven damage before resistance. Um, if they have okay. the two extra momentum from Versal, I'd say use it for penetration and then grab another momentum for reroll the zeros. Yeah, we'll do the. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Use the two for penetration, then reroll the two three zeros. Yeah. Okay. No. Oh. So you're at eight uh, with spread all right so let me math here uh so you did more than five so that's one breach uh the next is you take down its shield so that's another breach and it's it's on the second hit that you do the breach okay so it's still up uh it has taken two hits though and is only going to be able to act once, uh, if I remember NPC ship rules correctly. Um, it is unable to actually take its next action. Okay, good. Good. All right. So, uh, with that done, uh, I'm actually going to spend the last of my threat uh, to make something Question. even worse. Um, but there's good news in this, too. So, the Arcadia, uh, Highlong reports, Sir, I, I've got another two Jem'Hadar ships coming in, but but I have good news, sir. Yes? It, it appears that we have a uh, Miranda class headed our way, the, the USS Downs. In, in fact, they're hailing us. And it is at this point that uh, our guest uh, person, if you would care to, commence the hail and introduce yourself. This is Federation Starship USS Downs to Arcadia. Uh, looks like you guys can use some help. You are very welcome. Fire at will, please. Uh, we will. All right. So, and, uh, uh, Downs, you're not going to be technically on the map until the start of the next round, and you're going to start lower right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you don't have token permissions. You should be able to move it, hopefully. Uh, I do not. Okay, hold on. Let me edit. Uh, do, 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 do. 
Uh, how about now? Yep. Cool. We're good. All right. So technically, uh, Torchbearer and Arcadia have uh, the next uh, actions, but we're going to go to the Torchbearer because a very important thing needs to happen down in sick bay. So, Doctor, you have two patients in front of you. One is Agent Zazir, the Cardassian defector who claims that he has uh, vital information about an attack on Beta Z. The second patient is your one and only uh, Lieutenant Commander Klein, who has suffered a rather grievous injury to the head. And you have to make a choice here. You can either s attempt to save one or the other, unless you spend two momentum so that you can try and treat both. And just so you know, the second person you try to treat will be at an increased difficulty. So I need to know what your course of action here is. So I've got the triage talent. Oh. I don't know if that applies. Uh, let me look up triage, because triage is, uh, if it does what I think it does, that actually gets rid of that increased difficulty. I think it's, I spend one momentum to diagnose two patients. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Triage, when you attempt to identify specific injuries or illness or determine the severity of a patient's conditions, you may spend one momentum to diagnose an additional patient. So that's the key where there is diagnose. Um... You know, thinking about it, I, I think that that's not a very good talent. Like, it needs to be not just diagnose. So I'm going to say it is just one momentum instead of the two. Okay. Uh, if it's just one momentum, then I guess I will spend that. Okay. Um, so I can try to treat both of these patients. And then do I have any... It, it looks like Klein is in worse shape? Uh, they're in equally bad shape. All right. If 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 they're in equally bad shape, then I will um, do as uh, requested of by requested of by my captain. Although the as soon as I see them, I, I just ask the person who's bringing them in what happened to them. Uh panel in the ceiling blew out, sir. Hit him right in the head. And the Cardassian. That may have involved some punching. <sighs> what do y'all do up there? Bring them in. Put them on the beds. All right, so the, the, your assistants bring them in, and making things worse is the fact that injuries are coming in across the ship. So I'm going to say that your complication range here is 18 to 20 because you have so many bodies in sick bay. Uh, the task to actually uh, attempt to stabilize uh, this uh, either patient is going to be, I believe it's the first aid task. So let's pull that up. Let's see. First aid. Do, 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 do. Uh, yes, it will be a daring medicine at a difficulty one. Uh, but I'm going to spend one threat, my very last threat, to make it a difficulty two for each. Okay. Um, well, I've got... Let me see here. Oh, my values are missing. Um, that's unfortunate. So I will. I've got cautious medicine, so I'll spend. I'll start with the Cardassian, and I'll spend one momentum to get three dice, and I believe that lets me reroll one of them. Okay. All right, and I've got a surgery. I have got surgery focus. Um, surgery would I apply think here. A close Basically, these both both of these individuals have a very severe concussion that you have to sort of, like, reduce the swelling of the brain and all that. Okay, so you can reroll that zero because of your cautious. Um, what, what was the complication range up to? 18, 18. to 20. Yeah, I'll reroll that. Use a momentum for that? No, you get to because I'm cautious. Okay. All right, uh, it's... So that's three successes. So you get it, one momentum. Okay. Uh, you were healing Zazir first, yes? Yes. Okay, then he is stabilized. 
So you do not need to worry about stabilizing him. He will survive until the next scene at the very least. Okay. And then um, I need to do a check for Klein as well. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty is two or three? Uh, the difficulty becomes a three. Right. Okay. Um, I'm actually really surprised that I don't have any values written down. I suppose I could make one in the instant. I mean, I wouldn't mind. Not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, that's it. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, are you spending your determination for two auto successes, I'm assuming? Or, I think it might just be, it's only a... Uh, yeah, I'll do the two free successes. So I'll roll. Um, I'm not going to buy any momentum. That does mean I don't get any rerolls, though. Okay. Well, hmm. No, I'm going to. I I'm going to do it. So, so just I so you know, you have one momentum at the moment. And you to get the next die, because you have determination, determination counts as one of your five. Um, oh, right. It would cost a momentum and a threat. Ah, yeah. Uh, never mind then. Alright. See what you do. I see a success, which is all you need. So yeah, you are able to stabilize Klein as well. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest though, the other one was a complication. Oh. Uh. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> It was a 19. It is a 19. 19. All right. So there will be a complication here. And that complication is uh, as you stabilize uh, Klein, you realize that uh, Zazir is actually starting to fluctuate again. Oh, does that mean I need to make another roll? Uh, it is, but we'll have to do that on your next turn in either uh, when it comes to the next round. Okay. All right, so the gem and R have already gone, so it's just whatever Arcadia wants to do for its last action, really. I haven't done any repairs. Yeah, getting shields up could be important. How many talents can we do? What what do you mean? How many talents? Well, so I have jury rig, and the a little more power requirement. So jury rig uh, can reduce the difficulty by two to a minimum of zero, and then a little more power. If I succeed at an engineering task, I can spend a momentum to regain one spent power. Ah, uh, yeah, you can combine those two, no problem. Okay, so we're going for shield. I think so, yeah. Okay. So shields, uh, this would be a power requirement of one. So you'd be down to two. And it would be a control engineering at a difficulty of one, assisted by the ship's structure and engineering. And this actually is at a difficulty of two because your shields are at zero. So if I... And then, so I'm on the ship. Mm-hmm. So as chief engineer... That goes down to one. So maybe don't want a jury rig, or do we want a whole bunch of well, momentum? Jury, jury rig is only for repairs. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So control engineering. Yeah. And if someone could get the ship structure engineering, please. I got it. Structure and engineering for the Arcadia. Do you... I should spend momentum because we're going to get momentum back, hopefully. Hopefully. I think so. Okay. Cool. Yeah, okay. you get a lot of momentum. Uh, so let's see. That was a difficulty one, so you get four momentum. And so I'd like to spend one to do the little more power to get power, the power that we just spent back. So it's how much? How much power? Just one. Yeah, it's just one for okay. one momentum. 
And then maybe spend momentum to get more shields, maybe? Yeah, because you restore two shields. And then it's two shields per one momentum, right? Correct. Okay. Should we just go back down to one? Or just do it all? Yeah. Well, I mean, having one would be good. That way we can... I mean, yeah, buying the third die is good, but having more shields is also good. So it's a difficult decision. I think... I think we at least spend two here. Uh, I, I do think there is an argument for saving that last one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll go up to six shields? Yeah. Yeah. We. All right. So, uh, Dante, as you do your uh, work in engineering and you are able to restore shields on the secondary hill of the Arcadia. And it is at this point that we're going to reset the initiative order. All right. So, attack ship F, attack ship H, get the downs in here, and yeah, if you guys could reset your dots. And yeah. Alright, so, uh, it is now going to be the Jem'Hadar's turn, because you guys uh, acted first. Well, technically, you know, it bounces between you two guys, so it bounces from you guys to the enemy and back and forth. Um, so the very next person to go is actually going to be attack ship F and attack ship F is going to do something that Jem'Hadar are known for. Uh, they are going to attempt to ramming speed. Wait, didn't well, you say me, it lost its last actually. action? Yeah. Didn't you say, from the stunned. damage it took that it lost its action? Yeah, it lost its action for that round. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Actually, looking at ramming speed, it's a target within long, so I can't actually do it. Oh, no, hold on. Uh, no, it's more difficulty. Okay, the so farther it's, it goes. it's the farther it goes. Okay, so yes, it will be ramming you. Oh, God. Uh, so this is a difficulty two. All right, so let me roll. Uh, I'm going to spend my one thread I just got to make this a additional die. And they get three successes, which means I get a threat back. Um, so how much damage does this do? Uh, this does a number of challenge die equal to the ship scale, plus spread and vicious one. Jesus. Right. So it's doing a grand total of three damage. Well, three oh, challenge okay. die. And it also suffers a number of damage equal to the ship scale. Okay. So if I roll uh, enough here... Uh, the ship will basically kill itself. Okay, uh, I'm going to spend that one thread I just got to re-roll those two zeros. Okay, so Torchbearer, uh, you take all of two damage to your shields, and the attack ship uh, F more or less kills itself in the process. Yes! Okay. Okay, I feel a little bit better about our chances. <laughs> Alright, so uh, uh, I... it is now uh, anyone's turn on the player's side. So that could be the Arcadia, that could be the Torchbearer, or it could be our guest. I just want to say to Mox, save that recording. That's going to go on a laugh track. That's funny. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, yes, sir. Um, I'm going to use my Direct, because I don't believe I've used it yet. Okay. And I would like to direct, uh, I will point out the attack ships G and H to, and how they make a nice little line. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to direct Janice to fire uh, a, an area of uh, phaser towards them. All right, so... So I want, uh, I want, to, hit, I want to hit them both with phasers. I gotcha. So that's a uh, difficulty two, control security for Janice. All right, and he'll get to reroll one of his dice, and we get to keep the initiative for free. Control and secure. Hey, you want me to do two, uh, just two dice for right now? Uh, I think this is really difficulty. Needs to difficulty is two. I say we spend mm. it. I think we're gonna earn it back. Yeah, do it. I'll go ahead and roll for the ship for us. Oh, control secure. How many dice am I rolling? Uh, you're rolling two default unless you spend that momentum, so you would be rolling three. 
Admiral. Spend it. Okay, three dice. Yeah, no help from either Tahan or the Arcadia. Oh, no. boy. Oh, shit. You get a reroll. You do get a reroll. You, re you okay. reroll that complication, buddy. <laughs> do I get a single die or complete re or a two uh, die reroll? Just the one. I think. Okay. And control. Security. One die. Clickable focus. Smith. Hey. Okay. So you get that momentum back yet? Yeah, go ahead and uh, roll me your nine challenge die, please. Yep. Coming out. Okay. All right. So you have two versatile. What are you spending that on? Hmm. Uh, I'd say piercing to get the maximum effect of our damage. And then I'd and then probably say maybe spend that one momentum to re-roll those zeros. Yeah, yeah, there's five zeros. Right. I, I like it. it. Okay, so I'm refault rolling five. Yeah. Right. Five die. Mit. Okay. So that's going to be a total of 10 damage to G, which I believe then does half to H. Is that correct? Uh, That's in the ballpark. I have to look it up. I think it's um, number of effects. Yeah, it's oh. a number of targets equal to effects within close range. All right. So, the damage is equal to half plus the effects, I think. Yeah. All right. So they each still suffer a breach, but their shields remain up. So they still can act, which is the important part. All right. All right but we get to keep the initiative for zero momentum because of my one of my talents. Okay. So who's going next? Uh, uh, next? Y'all can. Um, yeah. Do do your thing. But the, oh. both these ships have uh, one breach now. Hmm. Mr. Mox. Sir. Quantum torpedoes. Yes, sir. Those two. Biggest, baddest bang we can make. So, salvo or no salvo? Salvo. Okay, that's three threat. And one more ship. <laughs> <laughs> the daring and security? Uh, uh, control, control security. Uh, the overall difficulty is a three, and the ship is assisting you with weapon security. You have no momentum at the moment. Does Mox oh. have a determination he can spend? Hmm. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Oh, damn. Doesn't even need it. So yeah, you get a momentum. And yeah, Mox, if you want to roll me a uh, nine challenge die, please. Is it a momentum or two? Because we have four in tactical or security. So we don't have an increase in difficulty for firing again. Uh, it's still three because torpedoes are base three. Oh, right. All right, so that's going to be 11 damage to attack ship G, attack ship H. Uh, Which one? Let's do the G. Okay. So G's gone. Like, you fire another salvo and G just evaporates. Mox turns around and does finger guns to the captain. <laughs> Nice. Through the smoke and blown out consoles, I just have a little smirk. All right. Well, as they say, turnabout is fair play. So with my remaining threat, all four of it, I'm bringing in another ship, and attack ship A is going to be firing its torpedoes. Turnabout sucks. <laughs> yeah. All right, so attack ship A. Uh, I have no threat on this, so it's just going to be a straight roll for them. Uh, they get one success, so their torpedoes miss you completely. Yeah. All right, so it is now uh, player's turn again. I I say we let our guest go here. Yeah, let him get in the fray and uh, take a shot or two. Yeah. Yeah, let the new new guy be the bullet sponge. I'm down exactly. with it. <laughs> See, he gets it. Um, I will take a... Movement counts as uh, one of my actions, correct? Correct. It would be a helm action to move. Alright, well, I don't want to spend power, so I'm going to... 
One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll move to here. Okay. Um, and that'll be my helm action. And can I... Uh, deploying the fighter wing would be a uh, another action, correct? I believe so. I don't think I put it in there, did I? No, of course I didn't. That would just make too much sense. No, you and you didn't put it on the macro either for the fighter wing to attack or anything. GG me. I'm totally prepared. All right, hold Solid. on. Uh, let me find... Where is Jester's Typhon class? Here it is. All right, fighter wing. Uh, the ship contains one or more scale one fighters, yada, yada, yada. Each round, the carrier's commanding officer of the, or the flight squadron leader can direct the wing's attack. So it's just automatically applied. Um, on a offense, you must choose either offense or defense. Uh, okay. If it's offense, then you get two bonus momentum on a successful attack. And on a defensive... You re increase the difficulty of all tasks against you by one. Okay. Can I set fighter's defense on someone else, or does it have to be me? I'm going to say you can set it on someone else. Because um, I would like to deploy the fighters in one of either K9 or J10 in between myself and the torchbearer. Okay. And deploy them there as defensive, so if any other Jim'Hadar decide to take a run at him. The fighters will protect them. All right, so uh, Torchbearer, I'd like you to remind me and keep me honest that attacks against you are at an increased difficulty. Okay. All right. Um, and I think that will end the Downs turn. Okay. So? Because uh, I can't fire anything, so yeah. Yeah. All right, so up next is going to be uh, Jem'Hadar Attack Ship H, uh, the one that uh, has half shields at the moment. Uh, it is going to do uh, sort of a swooping action. So it's going to swoop in here and open fire with its disruptor cannons. And that actually gets me some threat. Oh boy. So let's break it down. Uh, Arcadia A, your resistance is a 3 uh, because of your structure damage. Uh, that is going to be Vicious 1, 10... 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's going to be a grand total of 11 damage to you. So your shields are gone again, which is one breach. And you also take, uh, because it's more than five, so you suffer another two breaches. Yeah, Gemidar ships are easy to kill, but they, they light things up when they can. So let's see where you're hit. Okay, that's oh, important. Okay. That's important. So before we even roll the next one, we need to talk about this. So when you take uh, this many breaches to structure, uh, certain things happen. And I'll sort of paraphrase what the paragraph is. So the whole the ship's hull integrity has been massively compromised. And this means that it requires nothing less than a full rebuild in space dock. Uh, there are so many hull breaches across the ship and so many fires that the ship is crippled. Um, life support is failing on all decks. The resistance is zero and you can no longer attempt to repair anything during combat. And you also may not move except by thrusters. And any future hits to structure damage engines instead. So let's roll the next hit to see where you're hit. All right, you're hit to computers, which I don't think does anything important. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it just take a breach to structure. Impact doesn't do anything for you. All right. So that is that is the Gem Hadar's turn. It is now the player's turn again. So that could be Downs again. It could be the Torchbearer again. Just let me know what, what you're doing. So uh, Bryn is officially stranded. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> At this point. <laughs> Base Doug. Uh, Can I drive the nebula to go save them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, stranded, but alive. Right. Uh, oh, I uh, The downs will go again. Sure. Trying to make myself as big of a target as I can. 
Okay. So, uh, let me zoom in to see which one this is. H. Um, I am going to attempt to shoot H. All right. So, yeah, pop your macro, and it should handle everything we need to see. All right. And uh, I will declare I'm shooting phasers. Okay. All right. So, you actually get... Uh, what is that? So, that's three successes, four successes. So, you actually get everybody uh, to momentum. Yay. And you're doing seven damage with your phaser banks. What do you want to spend your versatile two on? Um, uh, I think that everybody has done a very good job of using, um, uh, what is it? The piercing? spread piercing. Mm -hmm. Um, and we will continue to do that. Well, good news then, because once you get rid of all its resistances, that causes two breach on attack ship H. So as the attack ship H swoops in and blasts more holes in the poor Arcadia A, uh, the USS Downs re-diverts its attention and fires once, twice with its banks, knocking the attack ship away and sends it careening into a death spiral before it finally explodes. Okay. Go team. Man, those Miranda classes are better than they used to be. Yeah. We've been totally flying the wrong ship this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next up is going to be a Jem'Hadar attack ship A, and then we are going to actually cut... Or no, I've already used A, it seems. So let's do attack ship I. Um, we're going to do I, and then we're going to do medicine checks on the torchbearer. So attack ship I is going to swoop on in to the downs, and it's going to do its own canter barrage. Which succeeds. So you are going to be... Man, they're rolling well. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, I don't think I gave the downs uh, ablative. I think I sent you the sheet, didn't I, uh, Walter? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. No, he's it does not. Now, oh, so. he's muted. Uh, yeah. He oh, does... my bad. I've been talking like for a minute. Um, <laughs> no, uh, you did send me the sheet. Uh, it is resistance for no talents for a blade of armor or advanced shields. Uh, they were all spent elsewhere. Okay. So then you are going to be taking uh, 13 minus four. So nine damage. Uh, that is going to be the blue bar. And all I believe right. that is enough for a breach. So let's figure out where you're hit. Um, is it? Uh, is that breach coming from me losing all shields? Uh, no, this is because it did more than five. Okay, I was going to say, because I'm shields ten, so I've got one shield. Oh my god. Left. Yeah, you, you've got one little point of shield left. Hey, that one little point matters. It does. All right, so your weapons. <laughs> I think that's, that's fair, but let me make sure, because I don't think weapons, let's see. Uh, all you have to do is do the the restore minor action, and you can use weapons again. Sounds like what I'm going to be doing on my next turn. Yeah. All right. So that's uh, that's attack ship I's turn, and we're now going to cut to the medical bay of the torchbearer. Uh, well, you now have a fluttering agent that is uh, in need of more medical attention, doctor. So this is going to be another daring medicine difficulty three now. And uh, instead of bringing in another Jem'Hadar ship, I'm going to spend my threat instead to make the complication range a 16 to 20. All right. Um, so difficulty three. Um, and that's like, I assume that's including my advantage for sickbay? Correct. All right. Um, would you guys hate me if I bought two extra dice? I will be able to re-roll out of some stuff with cautious medicine hopefully um i i'm fine with it beta zed's on the line i get my strength <laughs> give me your energy for this spirit surgery <laughs> <laughs> there you go you get the three. Uh -oh. oh boy that's fine. Well, you I can, can reroll that complication. It. Holy shnikes. Yeah, and I will. I just hope it's not a complication. Eight. 
It is not. Okay, it good. is not. All right, so that is six successes, so you get three momentum back. And yeah, uh, it looks dicey for a moment, like you almost lose him, but then you bring him back, and he's stable once more. And then the Torchbearer itself can do an action. So whichever uh, whichever one of you on the bridge wants to act. Hmm. Oh, and at this point, since you're farther away than the Arcadia, uh, the shield coverage you had is gone. Oh, shit. No. Bad news bears. Bad news bears. But it is difficulty well, one higher to hit you. So you got that going for you. We, what do I need to turn back on to get our... It, uh, you would have to get repair. back there close range. No, no, no. I mean, repair the ship. Oh. What do we? I can. I haven't gone this round, and I can do something to re repair something in our system. Uh, sure. Which? Uh, what would you like to be repairing? Well, what would the captain like me to repair? Uh, sensors. Sensors. Okay. Okay. So the difficulty to repair this is a difficulty four. And I need you to do a daring uh, engineering if you're doing it yourself, or a presence and engineering if you're sending people to do it for you. Well, I have not, not everything can be handled behind the console because you said we reset on this, right? Mm -hmm. Our values. So I can use that value and send my own butt down there. Okay. Okay. And you said roll for what in person? Daring and engineering. Engineering, and I'm doing sensors. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I have anything for that. Okay. So I'll do two. Do we want to spend a momentum for a third die? Or are we getting two for the value? Yeah. Well, it would be it would be two momentum for the third die because determination counts as your dice. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, do we want to spend it? I wasn't sure. Um, Looks like Crowley's saying to spend it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the third die coming in. I don't have a focus for this. I can't cover everything. All right. That's that's the four you need. So Oof. I will say that your sensors are back online. They still are considered disabled, but you are no longer at an increased difficulty to attack. And that will be so, your internal systems action. Oh, do we will we roll on the ship on this? Uh, no, the ship does not assist you for this. Okay, just making sure. Okay, all right. The ship is staying higher. Load over there to the left. There you go. <laughs> Tickles good. Thank you. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, attack ship A, uh, as Chad has pointed out, or at least someone on Discord has. Uh, I did not reset attack ship A, so attack ship A is actually going to go. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to swoop in and attack the downs. So let's see how the downs rolls. Uh, all right, so downs, you're going to be taking 7, 8, 9, 10, minus 4, so 6 damage, which gets rid of your shields and causes 2 breaches. So let's let's see where those breaches are. Uh, structure, which could be important, and sensors. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to roll for your structure impact because we don't have a full NPC crew. But uh, Captain Ackerman, uh, someone on the bridge, basically a console blows out and lethally injures them. Uh, luckily, your medical teams respond right away. But you do have at least a few people down because of this attack. And gotcha. in order to restore uh, the sensors, you need to do a minor action. So remember, you can only do one minor unless you spend your like full action to do two minors. Um, so you cannot use anything which uses sensors, and you cannot do anything that involves weapons until you do a minor on both systems. Okay, but if I get the weapons back up, I don't need sensors to be able to shoot, correct? Uh, it is technically at an increased difficulty of one. Okay. All right. So that's, the uh, that's I guess, the good news. Uh, up next is anyone on the player's turn again. Mm. 
we could have the Arcadia A fire again. Wait, are we able to with the Arcadia? Because of yeah, the structure? Okay. Yeah, she's Swiss cheese, but she can still fight. Um, do it too? We haven't hit A or I yet, is that right? Uh, A has not been touched, I has not been either. I guess I can adjust the overlay since they've moved in. Move in so you guys can see what's going on here. I like spread here on a single ship rather than area. Yeah, that's probably smart. All right, Janice, it seems you're firing again. Oh, look at that. Man, so many rolls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do them myself. <laughs> so, yeah, a uh, control security for you, please. Weapon security yep. from the ship. Imagine when you have the big chair. Well, you know, we're doing pretty good against these guys, so I was hoping to get the big chair here in this, after this <laughs> round. <clears throat> All right, so no hold from the Arcadia. On, why am I? He just jinxed us. <laughs> oh, there it is. Control and security. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh oh. So I'm gonna make the complication be that because you nominated spread, you're actually going to hit the downs as well. Wait, are we? No, we're doing uh, yeah, we did it spreads time. for extra breaches, isn't it? Oh, you didn't do area, you did spread. Sorry, I yeah. thought you did area, and I was like, yeah, area with a complication? that That's going to hit the downs. All right, yeah, if you're just doing spread, that's okay. Uh, but your complication will be instead that you lose two power. So the Arcadia is down to all of one power remaining. Oh, lovely. But yeah, you can go ahead and roll your uh, nine challenge die, and let's see what happens. All right, so um, seven. What are you spending your versatile on? Uh, probably what piercing, and then use the last momentum to re-roll those zeros because those might be important. Yeah, I'd say go with that. All right, I like yeah, that so. idea. So rolling three again. Rolling three. All right, grand total of nine. So that's going to do enough to cause one breach, which gets rid of its action for this turn, or for this round. And yeah, I believe at this point, the only thing that can act on the enemy side before it goes back to you guys for the rest of the round is attack ship I. So attack it's not... Oh, sorry. Would it... I'm, I'm counting three breaches. Uh, how are you getting to three? Because I could be so, wrong here. Okay, so it, it does nine damage on the first one, right? Correct. So that would be one breach because it's over five? Correct. And then the second is hitting for uh, nine divided by two is uh, round down. We can go four plus two effects is six. And do they okay, still yes, shields yes, for that that's, one? That's what it was, as I was not counting that breach. So yes, that actually is enough to blow the A out of the sky. Okay. All right. So then, uh, with the remaining ship on the field, uh, I'm going to spend the threat I have to let it do this action. So attack ship I is going to go on a suicide run against the torchbearer. Oh boy. Um, does it also have the increased difficulty because of the fighter wing? It does, yes. <clears throat> and because okay. of longer range than close? Mm-hmm. So this, okay. this this is this is like a difficulty four or five for them, and we're small, so we're hard to hit. <laughs> so they only rolled three, which is good. Which means we'll say they miss you and end up right about there. And it okay. is now the player's turn. Oh man! So the torchbearer hasn't done any fighting yet, I think. Yeah, and they're right in range, right in front of your phaser cannons. Okay, yeah, that's I, super, no, I see the ship come into range. Are, are, are no, phaser like, cannons that we took all the power out of? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. You disabled the phaser oh. cannons. Yeah. Also, we don't have any power. Yeah, you also don't have any power. This is true. So. This is true. So Mox just watches it fly across the view screen. <laughs> A staticky view screen. Uh, yeah. can, can anyone still shoot? 
I mean, you you could shoot torpedoes. It would just be at like a difficulty four because of close range. Actually, no, it would be a difficulty five because of close range. <laughs> Jeez, okay. Mm. Mox, do you, do you, yeah, you already spent the termination, did you? Uh, not today. <laughs> I will spend determination. I hate to lose. Yeah. So yeah, this is going to be a control security for you, a uh, weapon security from the torchbearer, and the difficulty the difficulty is five. How many go? How many go? Sorry, go ahead. How many dice do I get by spending determination? Uh, well, if you spend determination, you get two automatic successes. And that means you have three dice on the table, which means any additional uh, dice you want to roll. So if you want one more die, it's two momentum. If you want two more die, it is five momentum. But you don't have momentum, so it would be threat. Hmm. I'm almost... Threat. Because... Oh, jeez. The thing is, aren't we giving you threat because we're shooting torpedoes anyways? Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's only another one. ship. It's only one if it's just a torpedo, right? Rather than a salvo. Correct. Or it... If it's just one torpedo, it is just one threat. If it's a salvo, it's three threat. Okay. I do have bold security, so I'm I'm tempted to give you threat to roll one more die. Do it. Do it. Yeah. yeah. I say go for it. Uh, Kyle's just gonna sit down on the captain chair and look to Mox and say, "Why is that ship still on my view screen?" Ooh, complication from the ship. Oh, great. Oh, oh, Janice oh, and I rolled I, at the same time. Oh, we rolled at the same time. Okay. Gonna take Here's the first, first one. Oh. Gonna take yep. the first one. You still can succeed, but there will be complications. Uh, well, I have I have bold security, so I'm going to re-roll that one zero. You can't re-roll the ship, I believe. No, I mean, in, in <laughs> my... Oh, in yours, yes. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so that is five successes, which is exactly what you need. Uh, so the complication here is going to be that you will be taking half of this damage. Oh, boy. Oh. Because of the proximity? Yep. So, yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll me eight challenge die, please. All right. So vicious one brings up to eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, do you want to spend any threat on, say, penetration? Because I'll just say up front, if you give me two threat, you will blow it out of the sky. Um, at this point, I'm a, I'm comfortable with giving him threat to blow it out of the sky. It's up to you. Do it. <laughs> okay, I do it. Okay, so the side effect to you blowing it out of the sky is that it's so close to the torchbearer that you guys are going to be taking two additional breaches. Oh, jeez. But the good news, as we're out of combat... Let's roll those breaches, and then we, we can decompress and deal with out-of-combat things. So first, let's see where the breaches are. Okay, structure. This is important, yep. because I believe yep. that now is four breaches to structure, yes? Three. If Three. the structure is going to cause anyone an injury, let it be the captain. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, oh, apparently I need to have been rolling impact this entire time. Hmm. Well, I'll have to remember that in the future. So yeah, let me roll a challenge die. Uh, not going to be the captain. It's going to be someone else. Well, it could be the captain. Let's let's roll the challenge, or let's roll a d6 and see who's injured. Five. Who's five on the old overlay? Me. Uh, you're already <laughs> injured. Reroll. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. reroll that. One. Uh, congrats, uh, doctor. Now you're oh, injured, oh. lethally. No, oh, God, no. Jesus. Hello, everybody! <laughs> oh, you're going off the of Discord overlay. Damn. Yeah. I was thinking, like, uh, number one would be... Yeah, okay, damn it. Yeah. So, that's the first breach. Uh, the next breach. Also destruction. Jesus! So, <laughs> let's... That's let's, four. Let's, let's, uh, let's roll that challenge die to see if anyone else is injured. Someone oh, else God, is injured. No. Oh, God, no! Oh, God. Uh, four. Who's four? Janice. Janice. Oh, oh that's Gundock. That's the engineer. Gundock, you are lethally injured. 
Oh, and son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah. So, the yeah, doctor. the uh, the structure on the uh, Torchbearer is also now destroyed. But yeah, <laughs> we're out of combat. Uh, your sensors are up. Uh, you have zero power Torchbearer. Life support is failing on all decks. Uh, you are Swiss cheese. The Arcadia A is Swiss cheese. Uh, the Downs has a few hits, but it's largely intact. So, again, we're out of combat. You can roleplay freely. Um, I have one question before we hop into it, GM. Sure. Um, I'm not sure if this is even remotely possible, but can I spend Klein's determination to do anything in terms of regaining consciousness or regaining any sort of stress or... Well, I would say this would be a new scene. So I will say for the doctor and for uh, the engineer, uh, if you two spend either two threat or a your determination, I will let you guys stay up without needing to worry. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um. Wait, and you've already spent your determination, right, Vel? Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he has. Um, I'm going to spend my determination. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Either, uh, a drive of exploration, maybe. Nah. Uh, home is where the heart is? I am on the torchbearer right now. <laughs> mm, sure. It's a stretch, but I'll okay. let it happen. Okay. Um, I'm going to get up and see that Vel is lethally injured, I'm immediately going to try and do first aid on him. Okay, so uh, that's going to be a uh, difficulty one. Uh, daring plus medicine, please. Yep. Uh, combat medicine is a focus. Yeah, that would definitely apply. Okay, so that's one. <laughs> so... Yeah, so that's all you need. And, uh, yeah, you are able to stabilize the doctor. No problem. Okay. Okay. And is he still basically, like, unconscious, or is he conscious? Uh, we'll say since this is a new scene, he is now conscious once more. He temporarily lost consciousness, but now he's back. Okay. Uh... Why is... Why are the, 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 the beeps? Why are they beeping? Um, oh, life support. We should fix that. Uh, we probably should, yeah. Sick bay uh, to Captain. Captain here. Um, we're, we're all stable in sick bay. I'll continue working on down here. Uh, life bay, life support is down. We should fix that. Understood. I said, you know. Gondax lethally injured now. Um, All hands, this is the captain. Any able bodies, get into a life pod. We're going to be re relying on their life support for now. Not essential uh, personnel, move to lifeboats. Um, I am a GM. Can I assume that Gondax unconscious from that injury? Yeah. Um, I'm going to immediately at least try and find him and I'm gonna attempt the same thing that I did on the doctor. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so daring medicine again? Yep. Okay. And it is at this point, uh, while this is all going on, that uh, Crowley, uh, you receive a hail from the Downs. Crowley here. Thank you for the assist, Captain... All right, so he Gondak's good too, and we have a momentum. Also, Captain Beckett, Steve. you are you are muted. Captain Silent. Of course, I'm I'm muted. Why would I not be <laughs> muted? I mean, that's just too helpful. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Captain Ackerman. Uh, we were on a uh, uh, mission of, well, response and crisis. But do you guys uh, need medical help, engineering help? I can send over a, a team of EMTs into your sick bay to help out. Yeah, that would be appreciated. Um, we're going to need engineering, medical, a lot of help. Do you have room aboard where we can beam over some non-essential personnel? Uh, yeah, we should have uh, room for that. Um, 
I mean, again, we are a crisis ship, so this is kind of what we're made for. Good. I'll uh, get a list of who's stable and who can move over. There is going to be a VIP you'll be taking from us, though. Oh, oh, there is. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm sure we can uh, we can handle that problem. We'll commence beaming in a moment here. I'll send you a coded message. Oh no, don't worry. We'll handle all the beaming. And I'll send you the message. So while, and, uh, you're, uh, while you're sending that message, uh, Beckett, now would be the time that that character shows up in sickbay. Wonderful. And you can describe what happens. So, in sickbay, right around uh, where we can pinpoint the life signs of a Cardassian, there will be... Four people beamed in, back to back, with phaser rifles up, and not just the little square ones, the actual, like, tactical-looking ones. All of them, head to toe black. Oh, uh, son of a bitch. The one who will walk up to where the, uh, um, to where the Cardassian is and whoever is working on him, they're all with faces covered with, um, well, think of it like uh, tactical face shields, things like that, but like the knit kind. And uh, he will walk up to, I'm guessing the doctor is over, the doctor or uh, um, yeah, whoever uh, else is the highest ranked person there. I think Klein's the highest ranked there. Oh, shit. Wonderful. So the person will walk in. Oh, Klein. Commander. I'm here to pick up this spy, and I'm taking him. And who exactly are you? Mm, let's just call me Galahad. And he'll motion for one of the other guys to grab, um, to grab the Cardassian. Absolutely Scoop not. Up. This man I, is my patient. And that, I'll stand with him. That's awesome. Hey, uh, you know... There would be a way that you could stop me from transporting if you had these things called... Oh, yeah. Shields. And he'll double tap his communicator, and all four of them and the Cardassian teleport out. I'm going to yep. try and grab onto the Cardassian, and if I go with him, I go with him. That's going to be a uh, difficulty five task, but I'll let you roll and attempt it. Sure. Uh, what would that be? Like, daring security? Probably. Uh, this would be a fitness security, because this is you with a quick enough response time. Okay, fair enough. Ugh, I don't have any focuses here, but we'll try anyway. Um, I'm going to spend that momentum to get a third die. Okay. See, see what happens. No focus. Yeah, so what's going to happen is you dive for the Cardassian, and he's gone, and you just run headlong into the wall and take one <laughs> point of stress damage and knock Ow. yourself out. Oh, oh no! <laughs> and the, the last thing that is said by the person who's uh, been talking, he will say, "By the way, tell your captain. Sometimes doing cowboy shit works quite well." And then they will beam out. Yeah. And after they beam out, the uh, Downs, who's now gotten its shields back up, everything online, turns around and heads right back the way it came. Oh, son of a. Bitch. Captain, the USS Downs is departing. Um, it has departed. <laughs> Past tense. We oh, can't chase shit. Him. Doctor? Why would they leave? This was a rescue mission. Uh, were they in contact with the Torchbearer? Uh, you would know that they had talked to the Torchbearer, yes. Alright, uh, I'm gonna have uh, Don Luke um, had all Me. of the Oh man. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna, gotcha. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have you head off um, everything that needs to happen on the Arcadia, and then yeah. I'm gonna go over to the Torchbearer. Um, while th the doctor on the Torchbearer is going to uh, stabilize Klein, and okay. then tell the captain that um, the our one of our um, patients was kidnapped at gunpoint. Okay. Let's uh, actually let's take a break here. Um, but yeah, I think I think we could all use a, a quick breather. So let us actually take a, a ten minute break here, and yeah, be back uh, at four fifty, please.
Yeah. And remember, I do leave the stream up. I just mute myself so they can hear you. All right, cool. BRB. Stabilize Klein. Yeah. New band name. I'm calling it. <laughs> can you believe that, GM? He tried to kill us. What a big <laughs> I'm bully. still here. I hear you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. This, these words aren't for you. <laughs> okay, now I'm AFK. Okay. Except I can still hear you because I have you on speakers. Oh, dang it. <laughs> so, so I'm going to safely assume out of character that, that was section 31. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. that's where yeah. my brain is at. Oh, I was thinking it was a Kingsman. There was uh, Galahad and Arthur and Merlin. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure our, our oh, lovely Captain old. Ackerman won't tell us. So, <laughs> I'm just going to say that the name Galahad's been dropped four times during Ophion. Oh, I know. Uh, see, this is what happens when I'm not caught up. <laughs> it mm. is the uh, the call sign for a uh, certain person and his certain intelligence team. Great. Cool. I, I would have said we should have shot him, but you know, hey, even we're not in shape right now for uh, stinking Miranda. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and no power. <laughs> Just point blank again with another volley of quantum torpedoes. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so did you leave your fighters behind? Oh, did he? No. Okay. Darn. <laughs> I was about to say, interrogate! Interrogate! <laughs> they all took cyanide pills. Oh, <laughs> Jokes on you, they're the Tashi are. You know what sucks? Fun. Hey, Ton. We both can't travel at warp. I understand. Oh, oh Christ. Yeah, cannot, you're right. Cannot. Well, that's not true. Our structure is no. trashed. We can't oh. warp field. Yeah. Oh, God. No, I was thinking of using the, um, the, the captain shuttle, but I believe it's part of the primary. It's, part of the it's a part. Of, yeah, it's part of saucer. And well, no, it, it might be the very tip. Well, I, the, uh, our, our token's a little bit wider than the actual um, secondary section is. Well, yeah, that's the bottom part of the saucer there. So well, it, it, would, it would only be... It, the, the secondary section doesn't have the big um, impulse things that are on our token. So what we're saying is we gotta call Bryn and tell him to get into the captain's yacht and come tow us? Here, look at the, no, uh, no, no, we, oh, no. No, oh, we oh, need oh. a Nebula class to go to Bryn. Yeah, and up, then yeah. come to us. <laughs> Here, take a look at it, because this is how I, I did the edit. Oh, no, it looks great. Uh, basically, the the where the impulse engines are on the drive hall, those, they actually don't exist there. <laughs> uh, it's part of the saucer. It's just a housing and shielding for uh, crew quarters. <laughs> I mean, I will say that uh, you guys uh, can do some things, but we do have a break. Uh, you've got like six minutes to do whatever. Okay. Oh, yeah. Tahan I'm... has a new favorite enemy as soon as he finds out what happens. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Uh, I did want to say uh, thank you for being here, Walter. I appreciate it. No problem. Walter, um... I'm glad my uh, my incessant bugging to come and save the uh, the Arcadia, you know, worked out well. Yeah, and of course you're oh. free to hang around as much as you want, but that is pretty much all the content I had for the guest character. But you're free to hang out, no problem. No, um, I'll jet out, but I'll I'll still be watching the stream. So, uh, Roger that again. Thanks so much. No Walter. problem, Walter. Walter. <laughs> <laughs> he's our fun he's guys. Out. Yeah, uh, I I wonder how many people are still left in Drake's fan club after this because I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's not many. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I like Drake. I just don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you're not the first person to say that recently. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, have a good one. Have All right, a good take one, care. Man. Thanks. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, Walter is going to be this group's con whenever we need to yell <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh my god. Oh.
I'm officially no longer a bag of nerves now. This is scary. And that was only an hour and a half or what? <laughs> yeah. Hey, guess what? We're still in, uh, we're, we're still by the border. Yeah. So we can't, yeah. at the moment, we can't warp, right? With six holes. No, can... you cannot warp either ship at this point. Um, another question. How far from the border, how far are we travel-wise to the other side of the border? Uh, you're on the Federation side of the border, which is the good news. Oh, okay. The, the, the bad Gemini news are, is where we are. Jem'Hadar could care less. <laughs> yeah, the Jem'Hadar probably still don't care. But considering you just blew up A, B, C, D, E, F, G, E, like I, seven? nine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they 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 aren't going to commit anything new to this. A week. Yeah, they, we, we're not going to risk it. Yeah. All right. Well, I tell you what, it sounds like people are here, so I'm just going to put us back on the, uh, the screen so we can continue so, to talk shop here. Could... We'll make the torchbearer the new saucer section. It'll be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't Imagine. Swiss cheese, it would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is... How would that look? We're in a rough spot. Like that. <laughs> That'd be good. That's I mean... the stupidest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think by stupidest, you mean the awesomest. No, I said what I meant. False lasers. <laughs> So, so, I mean, we'd want to get power and energy back up? Well, yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, even if you are able to restore power, which you need to do from a narrative standpoint, it'll just We happen. won't be able to warp. Uh, you still can't warp because of the structure. Well, could we tie in the inertial dampeners to the shielding system to hold the ship together to allow us to warp? <laughs> well, the, the problem is, is that... It is like so many holes in your hull that even with power to say force fields and emergency bulkheads, um, you cannot move rapidly. It, it literally says under destroyed, you cannot move except by thrusters as any other movement might tear the ship apart. Right. Reinforce it with right. shields and lovely. Polar the ship whole... are being held together by tendons, basically. Yeah. Uh, For a split second, because I truly thought that Klein was going to die today, I was thinking about giving our GM another token of him, but it's one of the ones where, like, Klein's, like, not Klein, where Connor's, like, shot in the head in Detroit. <laughs> 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 wow. So, uh, I have something I want to do. Yeah, sure, what's up? Uh, oh, you know rubber. what? Before we do anything with these two... We've been neglecting Dr. Bryn. Oh, yeah. So let's let's go to Dr. Bryn. Uh, Bryn, you are here, yes? Oh. Yep. Earth to Bryn. <laughs> and he's either muted or not here. So while we wait for Bryn to come back, let's do this instead. Uh, I need uh, Admiral, since this is your fleet. I need you to roll me a challenge dice, please, to represent the Thunder Child's work at the riots. Oh, boy. This was my fleet. <laughs> okay uh the good news is that uh at, at before you transition over to talk with crowley uh the thunder child's captain basically passes along a message that they have contained the riots for now and they should be able to come assist within 24 hours okay mm -hmm. better kick them engines in its ass <laughs> my four hours too long All right, and I assume um, uh, Doctor Vell is going to be able to get Klein with. Yeah, you can and, just uh, Klein can come okay. back up. the The injury was more for insult than actual injury. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take away that one thing of stress damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean all it's right. a new scene, so everyone gets their stress back. All the all the shields and power technically comes back, but don't worry about it for now. We'll reset it later. Okay. All right, I'll I'll toot toot along to the torchbearer on like a little shuttle or something. Okay. So or I guess we have power up, so we can I can just beam over like a normal person. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, Bless you. I don't really have the map for the defiance uh, ready room, uh, but just imagine we'll use this. And yeah, uh, Crowley, 
your ready room is a mess. Like, if you had anything in here, it has either fallen off shelves, smashed to the wall. It, it just does not look great in here. Except my potted flower. Yeah, your that potted flower is just dirt in the in the side of the wall uh, or on the side of the wall. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> but the fish is okay. <laughs> fish. Oh, canonically, the fish in Picard's office survived the crash and on the Enterprise D. <laughs> I mean, it's a very important thing to distinguish. All right, so uh, Crowley, uh, you're looking at the sorry state of your ready room when a chime at your door happens. Well, I say chime of the door, it goes I, I I force the doors open manually. Yeah. Um, and in, in steps to Han. Well, I won't lie and say it was pretty, but we were up against insurmountable odds, and we're still here with... Um, do we have a casualties list yet? You do. And in fact, we're going to roll for it. Um, so because, uh, so much structural damage was taken by each ship, uh, both Crowley, since you're in charge of the Torchbearer, and Tahan, since you're in charge of the Arcadia, I would like each of you to roll me a 1d100. Now, this is going to represent how much of your other crew that are not named characters were killed. Oh, All right, so boy. Tahan, 60% of the Arcadia A's personnel have been injured and killed, Crowley, 54%. So Crowley, you maybe have about 15 working bodies on your ship. And Tahan, you are looking at a casualty list of about 120. But what we did was important. You got our contact to safety. I was surprised to see them leave so early. Uh, I saw you were in contact with them, though. Yeah. I was. Not just that, though. We also lost Pardon? another ship out there. Another ship's gone. It was. But they knew what their mission was. I'm not gonna... We won't know yet if that was worth it. It's, it's hard to imagine the loss of that many lives could ever be worth it but we're we're starfleet officers we know what we sign up for and today was one of those terrible days that we we try to not think about too much but it's here and we're gonna get through it this was literally my first engagement as captain and i lost over half my crew Injuries or death. This war needs to come to an end. I agree. But if you don't mind, I'm going to prefer to stick to the task at hand. Did you ask the Downs to leave early? I barely got off a transmission to them before they beamed aboard and had taken the VIP taken yeah doctor said they came in armed and covered we're gonna look over sensor logs of who they might have been through biometric data but i'm already pulling up a pad and looking mm -hmm. it's fairly uh, obvious they're starfleet intelligence actual starfleet intelligence as far as you're able to tell okay Well, I don't know why they would need to do it like that. Well, if I ever meet that captain, he's not going to be too impressed with me if I see him again. Why do you say that? He took off. The lives we lost, some of them were in conditions that could have been saved if he had stuck around. Or had at least have taken them but instead, I have five pods outside that have dead bodies in them. He's just as accountable as I am in my eyes. Captain, we barely made it out alive. It's possible. We will never know. But it is possible that if you had hesitated, 
even more would be dead. We can't think like this. It doesn't serve us. It doesn't help us. It's hard. I'm no, I'm no counselor. Um, but this is a hard job. Easy to say. It really is. I understand where you're coming from. Not the first time I've had to feel people dying. That hopelessness, that isolation they feel. That's something no one can ever train an empath or a telepath. Is when you feel someone slip away, and that last moment, depending on the person, it's either a bittersweet relief or absolute sorrow. That last emotion is a mix of everything of who they were. And I have to deal with that for all the crew I lost. I'm not going to say I'm going to step down or anything. I'm just saying that's going to fuel me to make sure I don't lose anyone else. Good. I'm done with this war. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to help end it sooner than rather than later. And if that means I have to do things on my own, then so be it. I don't want to feel someone blink out like that. Forgive me if I'm stepping over a line, but... I'm going to ask that you consider that sense... That instant you sense their deaths as a kind of gift. Hear me out. They're remembered more. This ship is the torchbearer. And you as a captain are their torchbearer. We make sure that they are remembered the way they need to be. These aren't just names, they have meanings. And you experience something horrible, but also their heroism and their drive and their passion for what they do. Remember that from them too. Is there anything else, sir? I have a lot of reports to fill out, letters to write, and documents to oversee. No, I just wanted to make sure you're okay. In time. All right, I'll see if there's anything I can do. Um, we'll stay in touch. The Thunderchild should be in here within 24 hours. We'll possibly receive other assistance before that. All right. So it is at this point that, uh, Bryn, you're here, yeah? I am. Cool. Let's uh, cut back to you on the planet. So, uh, as a refresher, uh, you had identified that the uh, source of this plague was actually a subspace-based microbe that was converting the sort of flesh and muscle and bone and other biological material into a certain alloy of chromium. Now, you had already used the Arcadia A saucer section to bombard the planet with a certain type of radiation, and you have been able to stop the spread of this microbe, but that is where we left off with you. Right. All right, so uh, Bryn is going... Now, the, the, the progression has stopped. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to want some reports on seeing if this radiation... Uh, what kind of effect that this has had on the population, any sort of uh, radiation sickness or poisoning or anything. Gotcha. Uh, if you could roll me a insight or reason plus medicine at a difficulty of two, please. And you do have one momentum. Uh, I think I'll hold on to that momentum. Okay. Um... I don't think I have any focuses on this. Mm, if you have anything that is related to diseases or plagues or quarantine, uh, anything like that would apply. Uh, I do have virology. Yeah, that would apply. Hold on. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Um, I'll say you still get some information, but it's not going to be like comprehensive. 
Um, what you get is that in order to completely stop the spread of the microbe uh, across the entire planet, you would have to subject the populace to what is essentially uh, mild radiation sickness levels of bombardment. Um, so you could conceivably just inoculate the entire uh, populace against it or after the fact, but it would be a significant undertaking for the colony. What kind of um, I mean, what what kind of uh, of sickness are we talking about? Is it something that is just discomfort, or um, I mean, is it something that they're going to be able to handle for a little bit of time until we can get the supplies here to to treat them afterward? So, uh, my understanding of radiation sickness out of game is that it starts with things like. Uh, fevers and starts things with like burn marks on the skin and some vomiting and things like that mm -hmm. um you don't actually start getting hair loss until it's like too late kind of a thing so okay. mostly treatable symptoms i guess would be the answer to your question all right so i'm going to uh request that the leader of this colony um start informing the population that in order to deal with this problem with the microbes that we're having, um, it's going to be like the equivalent of going through uh, chemotherapy where they're they're going to get sick and they're going to have some side effects, but it's all part of the treatment to get rid of this uh, turning into like Colossus metal beings kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Um, so that way, at least the, the population is informed and uh, we'll, we'll let them know that we will be bringing in, uh, that I'll be putting in a requisition to bring in, to have Starfleet bring, bring in as many supplies as possible to start treating them for mild radiation sickness. Okay. Uh, let's say yeah. that you, you sell, tell all this to Dr. Jefferson, who is your contact here and who you've been working with. Uh, he relay, relays all that and he says... Uh, Doctor, you, you've done so much for us, but I'm curious, do, do you think this condition is uh, re reversible? And he, he motions at his arm, his right arm, which is completely metal at this point. Still functional, but it's metal. Well, we're going to have to look into that a little bit further. Uh, I, I, To be honest, right now, I don't know. That's I, I've stopped the spread, so there's going to be no more further loss of life, which is was the main priority the second priority is going to make sure that nobody gets too sick from this the um the side effect from the treatment that we're going to have to bombard the planet with this radiation after that we're going to start looking into reversing what's going on here um i'll try to get my science officer on board as well and we're going to look into this uh, very good, and and please, whatever resources we have, I've, I've said this already, but you are free to use whatever you feel is necessary. Thank you, Doctor. And it is at this point, Bryn, that you get a hail from the Arcadia. Um, it would be whoever is at helm, some ensign, and the ensign says, uh, Lieutenant Commander Bryn, this is the Arcadia, please come in. You're talking oh, about mud. Oh, it's mud. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Jaeger mud for a little bit here. Sure. You talking about from the drive section or from the saucer? From the saucer. Okay, I was gonna say, how'd they get here? Yep, Bryn here. Uh, sir, we're getting a hail from the Arcadia's secondary hull. It's Admiral Tahan. Put him through. All right. So yeah, Tahan, you get in contact with Bryn. Doctor, how do things go on your end? Well, Admiral, uh, there was some sort of strange microbe here that was actually turning the population into metal. Uh, they were having significant loss of life. We were able to um, stop the progression, but I, we are having to bombard the planet with some radiation, uh, which is going to cause side effects. Uh, they're going to have mild radiation, sickness, and poisoning. Uh, we're going to have to put in a requisition to Starfleet to be be able to bring over the supplies and anything that they need to be able to get through that. But I have conveyed to uh, Dr. What was his name again? Dr. Jefferson. Dr. Jefferson. Uh, what's going to be going on? He is on board, and they are making the population aware. So uh, I think things are progressing adequately here. You don't sound so good. Is everything going okay there? 
It was a tough battle, Doctor. Um, we won't be able to come pick you up. Starfleet knows. They'll send someone for you. Um, do what you can for those people. We need to save as many lives as we can. But when you come back to the Arcadia, if we have one, it'll be a different ship than you remember. I see. Well, understood, Admiral. I'll do what needs to be done here. You're a good doctor. I have faith in you. Thank you. Admiral out. All right. So, uh, with that taken care of and Bryn working on that, uh, let's fast forward a few days. Uh, so at this point, uh, both the wreckage, well, I call it wreckage, the Hulk of the Arcadia A and the Torchbearer, uh, both of them <laughs> have been towed to Starbase 211. And uh, Bryn, uh, you were able to be relieved by a actual uh, hospital ship, a, uh, what are those things, an Oberith. Uh, it took over, and you were also able to come back to 211 as well. So everyone's character is on 211 in some capacity. And yeah, uh, at this point, you all have been sort of given leave to go as about as you wish. Uh, however, um, there is a JAG officer waiting uh, to speak with the Admiral and with Captain Crowley uh, when you two step onto the station. Let's do that. So, uh, as you two uh, come down the gantry way, uh, waiting for you is a captain uh, who has the markings of a JAG officer. And they introduce themselves and they say, Hello, my name is Damien. I am the JAG officer for the Starbase. Uh, you are Captain Crowley and Admiral Tahan, yes? Yes. Correct. Very well. And... Uh, he pulls out two pads and hands them to each of you and says, Consider this the official summons. Both Captain Crowley, Athos Tahan, and Lieutenant Commander Klein are hereby under investigation and a possible, possible tribunal for what actions transpired several days ago. Oh, here's a pad for you. And Damien it's, uh, full, kind of looks at it and takes it. Full report of the incident, scan logs, everything. And he looks at it and says, yes, I, I have this information already, but you can enter this into the record if you so wish. Considered wished. Done. Now, I, I don't have to uh, tell you that this is not going to look good to anyone. Uh... This tribunal is mostly to determine whether or not it's prudent for you all to keep your ranks. Uh, personally, I think you did a hell of a job. But the loss of life is something we have strict rules about investigating. So expect a tribunal. And I cannot honestly say that the outcome will be good. Thank you, officer. Very well. well. Review I the will be in touch. And... Damien, without another word, kind of turns on his heel and walks off. Crowley's going to wait until no one else is in eyesight, aside from the Admiral. Mm -hmm. He's just going to walk to a bulkhead, pull back his left arm as far as he can, and punch it. Okay. So I think it's probably safe to say that uh, you punch it so hard that you maybe break a few fingers. I think you should probably go see your doctor. For a few reasons. But your frustration is not one of them. I don't even feel it. Do you mean that? No, the actual sensation of pain, I don't feel it. How long has that been going on? A while now. It's it's the first sign to rejection of a limb. And 
Dr. Val told you that? No, I haven't even told him about it. It's been coming in the waves, going back and forth between losing yeah. sensation to feeling intense pain, and then nothing. I've been told to expect this. This is not the first time I've rejected uh, an arm, but it's waiting. It. Waiting's only going to make it worse. Go see your doctor. That's an order. Um, we can't have you okay. sick with, during a tribunal. It's hard enough already. Hi, right, sir. And he'll go find wherever Vel's at. Alright. Um, I think I'd want to go talk to any of my contacts on the on the Starbase and the intelligence community. Okay. Uh, what would you be asking about them? Um, in fact, actually, let's do it this way. So we'll say that you put in a word uh, to you want to meet, and they tell you to show up somewhere in the uh, terrestrial enclosure and some back back alleyway sort of dive bar. And uh, when you go into the bar and sit down and wait uh, after a few minutes, a uh, black-robed individual or a black-uniformed individual uh, does step inside and sits next to you or sits across from you, whichever you'd prefer, and says, you wanted to meet, Admiral. Uh, yeah, I wanted to check in on the well-being of the, um, well, that individual we rescued recently. Well, you can be rest assured that he has made it back to us safe and sound and that we are using his intelligence to prevent a absolute massacre at Beta Z. Um, why the secrecy? Why not just invite me to the intelligence offices here on the Starbase? This doesn't leave this bar, but Starfleet Brass is going to give up Beta Z. Can you tell me why? With the intelligence we've received... We are under the impression that defending Beta Z would be so costly that we would have to pull ships from rather important duties elsewhere. We simply cannot amass enough forces to effectively defend the planet. By evacuating what we can and offering what resistance remains, we'll certainly give them a bloody nose, but I do not believe saving Beta Z is in the cards. And that viewpoint is shared among those above us. Though I, it's worth saying, if it wasn't already clear, had we not gotten this information, it would be likely that the entire population of Beta Z would have been killed. I suppose I'll have to trust you on that, even if that is a victim. It feels very hollow. Well, unfortunately with this war, we have to take what victories we can get, hollow or otherwise. And if I might press once more, I know not to do it too often, but do we have any leads on Dominion Prisoner of War Camps? I thought you might ask about that, and I actually have some good news. We've located your, what's his name, Crowley, is it? No, Crowley's your captain. Uh, and he pulls out a pad and looks through it. Ah, uh, yes, him. We found your good doctor. We've actually recovered him. He's currently undergoing, shall we say, a, debrief a debriefing. Oh, uh, that's, that's excellent news. Um... Is he in this? Is he in the area? Well, no, I think it would be a good. No, he's at a undisclosed location elsewhere. But let me just be the first to tell you, he may not have got. Yeah, he may not have gotten out of the, his ordeal with his mind intact. Understood. Um. When, when can I? 
release that information to the Arcadia crew. I mean, you're certainly welcome to tell them, but it's not likely he will ever return to your crew. It's likely he will be in medical care for the rest of his life. We're talking severe PTSD, if not something worse. Thank you. I'll... I'll reach out to him and his family. If, if you haven't already done so. I think it would be best coming from you. Okay, well, I have a tribunal to get ready for. Thank yes, you. Yes, good luck with that. And uh, without another word, the intelligence officer leaves the bar. So yeah, kind of uh, open forum. Uh, you guys have uh, time to RP as you wish. Otherwise, we can actually just sort of start doing some housekeeping things. It's entirely up to you. Hmm. I go see the doctor. Oh, say again. Someone was really quiet. Uh, I guess I go see. I think Crowley's saying he wants to go see Vel, but he's really quiet. Yeah, you get like yeah. uber quiet. Second. Um, Tahan will go back and delete his stolen future information. Okay. But, um, he keeps the device even though it has nothing on it anymore. Okay. Uh, sound better now? You do? Yeah. Excellent. I'll go see Val. All right, you find Vel uh, probably in sick bay of Starbase Two One One. Doctor, Captain, uh, I suppose it's um, you don't normally come into my office un summoned. Oh, how can I help? What's wrong? I uh, need to look at the left arm, and. Uh... See if the uh, connective nerve endings are deteriorating or if they're detaching. Oh, when did you go to middle school school? When I spent a good solid year uh, waiting for a limb to be synthetically growing. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I'll give it a look. All right. So as you lead him out on and have him sit on a bio bed, uh, Dr. Bryn, let's say you're in sickbay as well. Because I don't think I've given you enough talking time this ep episode. Okay. Um, so you can you can join the scene at your leisure. All right. Uh, Doctor Bryn, could you assist me? Um, I know you're probably more familiar with uh, Captain Crowley's file than I am. Well, I'm not so sure I would say that, but sure. Well, at least you two haven't tried to kill me yet. The last doctor. Got close. Yes, yes, yes. We've all heard about that story. My God. <laughs> uh, Doctor Bryn, uh, uh, I'll I'll let you leave. All right, I'm gonna uh, take a look at what, what. So you have like a cybernetic arm, right? Uh, synthetic. Synthetic. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna pull out the tricorder and I'm gonna do me some scanning. All right. This doesn't need to be a roll. You can just tell him what's wrong, Crowley. All right. Uh, so a lot of the major nerve connections for the lower arm, uh, you can tell where the original arm was to the new synthetic one. They're starting to detach. Uh, antibodies are starting to attack uh, the uh, replacement limb. Is this... Is this um... Is this something that's commonplace with you? I think I remember this is not your first. Uh, this would be my third arm. Uh, the first two were too experimental, and they were weren't able to graft correctly. This one here took, but I don't know why it's changing now. It's feels like I got needles at the end of my fingers some days, and then feels like my whole arm's on fire, and then nothing. And is this a more basic 
This isn't like this isn't anything advanced biotechnology or anything. As far as I'm aware, no, it's just all Starfleet Medical uh, did for me after Wolf 359. I was told to keep an eye on the prosthesis or the synthetic limb, and these signs were described to me as early stage rejection. And it's been a few years now. Hmm. I'm not too, too sure what's causing it. Um... I'm going to approach this from a different angle and wonder if... In all likelihood, I'm going to end up losing this arm. So, is it com would it be common for this early stage rejection to happen so late? So late? Is that the mystery here? Yes, I'll say that. Is there any way that a um, synthetic arm could be grown from your own biogenetic material? It's a little more complicated than that. What they ended up doing was, well, they tried that. Um, but the materials that they could manipulate to grow rapidly had to be interwoven. If I was pure Betazoid or pure Vulcan or human, it's easy. But due to the unique makeup of being a hybrid, it presented challenges. Hey, Bryn. I'd like you to roll me a reason medicine, please. Difficulty one. Okay. Do I have any focuses on this? I'll say you do. All right. Bren, you look at your tricorder again, and you realize that the reason is that his limb is being rejected isn't because it's not a good limb, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It's because what remains of Andromeda's nanites that are in Crowley's system are literally trying to grow him a new arm. <laughs> well, Captain, this is, uh, this is unusual. It looks like, I feel like I'm just paraphrasing you. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like the... What's left of Andromeda in your system is actually trying to grow you a new appendage. And so it's trying to push this synthetic thing that you have at the end of your attachment here off. It's trying to reject it in favor of its new... That's fascinating. Yeah. I... Hmm going to take years for it to grow to a normal size because I don't want to be called Captain Baby Hand. I don't need that as a nickname. You can make up a time, Bren. It's entirely up to you, really. Uh, can a console explode next to Klein just randomly? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no random I, consoles I had, today. I had to make the joke. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I laughed. That's what matters. Um, well, perhaps we can facilitate the process. Um, give it a path of less resistance to grow. Right now, it's having to struggle against the current limb. There's a lot of interesting trauma to have. Lost my arm, got a synthetic, now losing that. Is this going to be like double phantom pain? I, I, I did get used to the arm. <laughs> a phantom menace. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I can't hang out with you guys anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Janice. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. um, so, sorry on. about that. My I, my power went out. I had to jump back up. I'm on my phone. Ah, yeah. Um, I'm so back how up. long how long do we think it would take? Well, as soon as this jet stops flying my over my house, uh, you think that if you were to encourage the growth of the limb, 
It would be maybe a week. Um, Captain, I think it would only take about one week if we encourage the growth of the new limb. If you don't want any unfortunate nicknames, you're, uh, you know, you could probably do with some sick leave anyways. <laughs> you're, you're, uh, understandable given the circumstances we've been through, but you're under a lot of stress right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the nickname Captain Stumpy would go over great with the crew. I don't miss you, Bren. That's good to know. But uh, given your medical history, I think we can... I don't think we need to keep you confined to a sick bay. We'll let you... Um, well, we are we are on a star base. I recommend you make use of the Arboretum and... You know, keep your keep your mind. Do what you need to do for yourself. Well, it will help it recover faster. You need to take off the arm. I've done that before, so yeah, you can proceed whenever you guys want to. Well, it would, um, we'll want us some time to prepare for surgery, but. Uh, we could do it later today so that you can get the regrowth done as quickly as possible. Very well. Let me know when. All right. So uh, with the time we have left, uh, we're going to keep the stream going because this is going to be important table talk. Um, obviously, we've reached a point in the campaign where we're looking at a new ship. Like, it's just easier to give you guys new ships. Um, however, I also want to say that we can certainly play it out and we can give you new ships and we can go through the tribunal, but this is one of those times in the campaign where it makes for a quote unquote clean break. So I want to gauge everyone's opinion. Um, we can use this as sort of a, a hollow victory as the Admiral put it, a hollow victory for these last, uh, for these characters and we'll say that the dominion war uh sort of claims another if it will or uh we can continue to play it out but with the understanding that something like this is probably just going to happen again um and that ships come at a premium so it's entirely up to you guys how we proceed at this point oh so would we hmm, like repair time versus construction time like, like are we getting a new ship is it well it would have to be in order to give you guys your old ships they would have to spend at least a month in space dock and that's assuming that something else doesn't come in that requires priority repairs and that's um, that's bare minimum time i so I think I do want to keep playing my character right now, okay. um, like it just as like a base thing. But I don't, I don't speak for everyone. All right, so captain oh. votes uh, that we stick, we continue on. That's okay. Noted. What would be the ship we would, you'd possibly think about? Uh, I would probably give you guys a steam runner, but you would be all in the same ship again. You would not be spread across two because Starfleet only has so many ships to spare. Well. Question, GM. Yeah, what's up? We literally have an Akira in our fleet that okay. has nothing wrong with it. You could take it so, over, yes. Couldn't we shift the Admiral's flag to a ship that's already in his fleet? You could, yes. So, you said it would just take a longer period of time to get these two ships back? Yes. I, I kind of love the idea of a time jump. Like, if we just skip forward a matter of months or even, like, a couple of years, I think we could be interesting. Um, so I'm not opposed to any of that. The one thing I'll say on that is, uh, canonically, the Beta Z does fall, uh, probably within a few days' time. And then there is the actual act of launching a counterattack against the Dominion. Um, so you have... 
maybe a year's time before the whole Dominion War is actually resolved peacefully. Um, so I would say that if we did a time skip, uh, it would be approximately four to five months because of all, you know, that's just how long it would take to get these ships back up and running. Um, but that would give you guys the opportunity to maybe help out in the final battle uh, to capture Cardassia. But it would be another sort of ruthless combat where it's the Jem'Hadar's last stand and bad things could happen. Right. Um... I guess the other question, though, is you wanted to eventually go to Campaign 2, right? Yes, so that's why I'm bringing this up now, because it is, it's not a happy break, but it is a break at which point either, to me, a time skip or a new campaign feels natural. Um, and again, for those on stream, the second campaign would be an NX ship and would be entirely new characters, uh, entirely new ship, entirely new time of era. Um, but if you guys don't want to go there yet, we don't have to. In one way, we're stuck in combat over and over because we're in the wartime. Right. Hmm. I have one other idea. Mm hmm But, uh, um, what if we time jumped to after the war to have one just like, uh, just for the nice send off episode, or or like you know a little arc. Okay. Um. I mean, I did that for the uh, the Ophion guys, and uh, we can certainly say next week will be the send off episode, and then the week following that will take off to give me time to uh, get all the NX material together, and then the following week after that we could be at the NX. Um. I'm kind of fine with lots of those options, so I guess I want to hear what y'all think. I'm fine with that. This little uh, send-off for all the characters. On one condition. Mm -hmm. I'll have to talk to the GM about something after off-stream. Okay. I have an idea. All right, Bryn, what say you? Also, your icon's lighting up, but I'm not hearing you. I'm still getting nothing. Yeah, still getting nothing. Nope. Oh, BP. Nothing now? Nope. Oh, we you got now. you now. Yeah, sorry. We're just, it's just. I switched back over to the PC after being on the phone, and yeah, because the power came back on. So anyway, yeah, I'm good with that. Um, this would totally be a downer episode to, to leave off this crew on, I think. Okay. Janice, what say you? I say, yeah, at least another episode. I'm, I'm totally down with that. All right. I am looking. I am looking forward to the NX campaign, though. Which means me and you have to get together, and figure out how our uh, leadership dynamics going to go. But that's after. No, oh, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God. And then uh, <laughs> Klein, what say you? Um, I'd be good with that. That sent off episode might give me. Another chance to finally bring Nalan back for a last hurrah. Okay. So, then, uh, I'm a. Uh, okay. And then Dante's. I know you. You're a relatively new addition to the crew, <laughs> but you still get a voice. I, I'm good with anything. So. Okay. Cool. Let's do that then. Let's uh, let's do the sort of farewell episode for the Arcadia next week, and we'll go from there. All right, so what I'm going to do now uh, with that decided is I'm going to end the stream. So stream, thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.